so much for joining us today for um, our startup story. Um, my name is Erica and I serve as the program manager at Conductor. Um, Conductor exists to empower entrepreneurs, innovators, and makers. And we do that through events like today to inspire um, other entrepreneurs and for a local entrepreneur to share his story. We also do it through offering technical workshops throughout the month. And then also through the Arnold Innovation Center, which is this facility that's a co working space. So if you're a small business owner, you could get a membership here. Um, Caitlin Crockett is our, um, she handles all the membership. She's out there, but any of us can help if you're interested and want some information on that. But enough of that, I hope you're enjoying your food. And please help me welcome Aiden. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, my name is Aiden, and I'm representing the Aiden Esslinger Company. And I am super excited to tell you more about myself and the business. So let's get into it. So my name is Ada Eslinger. I am the founder and CEO. A little bit about myself. I am 17 years old. I'm a junior at Conway High School. My next year, I'll be a senior. And then I founded the Ada Eslinger Company in 2015 at eight years old. Um, some more random things about myself. I'm a dog. I love to eat, love food. I love my family. Um, also a singer. I have uh, loved to sit around and sing with my family. Um, I just recently finished my school musical. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but um, Conway High School Theater Department did Kiss Me Tate, and uh, I played um, what was it? I played Fred in that musical, and that just ended. So uh, I have a lot of um, a lot of interest in this area. And when I was eight years old, instead of you know just doing the normal things, I knew from young age that I wanted to run a business. I knew that I wanted to have something of my own, have something that I can use to entertain people. Well, I've always been good at kind of, you know, catching a room and entertaining, making people laugh or whatever. So I knew from a young age that this is what I wanted to do. So how did I start a business at eight years old? The first step of that was forming this incredible team who has helped me and led me to where I am today. And this starts with my parents first for having me. That's the first step. <laughs> and then now they are the CEO and management of the business. So they helped me because I am young. Uh, they helped me with the logistics of everything that has to happen. Um, they have been the ones teaching me how things work, how to put an event together, how money works, how to manage money, um, all these things, how to control a group of people. Um, all these things that kind of helped me and taught me, they continue to manage to this day. And they're also here. So if you want to clap on them. <laughs> have my grandmother, um, which is who is Marie Roberts. She, she is our chief financial officer. Now, when you're running a business, especially a small local business, you want your money going to someone you know you can trust. So who better than grandma, right? <laughs> um, so she makes sure that all the finances are where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be. She also, um, you know, she's not emotionally involved in a project we do like I am, but she's able to give us a fresh perspective on what needs to happen financially. Make sure they were going in the right direction. And she's really good with making sure that everybody gets paid, make sure we're being profitable, make sure our revenue is where it's supposed to be. She does a really great job. So she's our chief financial um, officer. And here on the far right um, is Kia Buckingham. She is my aunt, and she is also our public relations manager. So she makes sure everything looks good to the consumer, makes sure I look good physically without anything. She makes sure that our social medias are where they're supposed to be. She has lots of social media connections. She's also an influencer herself. She's a uh, vocalist. So she makes sure that everything on the outside is looking good to the consumer. And that's a really, really big part of it. And as you can tell, this is a family run business. If you didn't pick it up already, um, family is very important to us. And like I said, we are family run. The entire family is involved in one way or another. Um, but we also do go outside of family. We uh, bring in musicians and artists and illustrators and all these things to make sure that the business can run. So that's even getting other people to come in. I have a slide, but we're going to mm -hmm. pick it up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So 
when I say everybody is involved in the business, I mean literally everybody. My sister, she is turning 13. She's my little personal assistant. She helps us whenever we're doing things. Um, all of my family cousins, everybody is very much involved with the business. So the second step of how is the three branches that we've kind of curated as we have developed our business. And the first step we call, I mean, the first branch we call AE Community. This is a nonprofit organization. And then we also have Authors Town, which is uh, how we self publish my books and others. Then we also have the production side, which is stage plays, films, and freelance projects. And we'll delve into all three of these branches a little deeper here in a second. <laughs> So before we delve into the branches individually, I want to go over some key moments that we've had as a business as a whole. In 2014, we did our first play called Steve Comes Home. In 2015, we tokened ourselves Ada S. Number Productions. And then in 2016, we did our second play, Grandma's Easter. 2017, published, published my first book, The Public Sky. In 2018, we did our full, our first full-scale production which was Sister Secrets, and AEP became the AM Esslinger Company. In 2019, did our very first dinner and show, similar to this. I would put on a play at the front of the room while people ate, um, as they're doing now, and it was pretty successful. And I did my second book, What I Can Be, from A to Z. And then in 2020, we got into doing film, which is where I did my first short film, Justice and Consent. Um, obviously, we couldn't do plays because of COVID in that year. In 2021, we created an LLC and we upgraded our business practices. And I also published my latest book, The King of Pangea. In 2022, we did our latest and largest production ever, which was In Love with Another Man to Play. And in 2023, we plan to shoot our next short film this summer. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to the evolution down here. Okay? <laughs> that was me a while ago, and then this is my more recent picture. And even since this picture, I look kind of different. So uh, I had races and everything in that picture now. I, know. <laughs> I hope you can see the evolution here, even in me. All right, our motto and our goal is to entertain and inspire. Not only do I want to, uh, um, is to entertain and inspire. Not only do I want to give people a good show. Keep people on the edge of their seats, make them laugh, let them, let them have a great time. I also want to inspire people in whatever way I can. So that's our goal. And whatever we do is to either entertain and inspire or to do one of the two. So let's talk about these branches. First, we have AE Community. This is where we get to express our humanitarian efforts. So we've done several things throughout the years to kind of give back to the community. I believe once people pour into you and give you an opportunity and um, help you financially, you should kind of put as much of that back into the community as you can. So we've done things here in the in our local community, as well as I have a large fan base in the Memphis and West Memphis and surrounding areas. But we've also done things in those communities. One of the things we've done in uh, those communities down there is um, partnering with Quincy's Race Creation Foundation. We've done lots of programs and things. They've done lots of things in the community down there to help out. Here in Conway, a couple of years ago, I was at an academic meeting at Cosgrove Middle School, and I noticed that the African American ACT aspiring performances were a lot lower than the student body as a whole. So I wanted to figure out ways that we could help change that and get those scores a little bit higher. So we designed a program that would incentivize students to go to after school ACT aspiring pro programs. We would give them gift cards and all types of things. Um, so that's something that we did a couple of years ago. And we also do book donation. Um, we I realized that we want to keep kids reading, but not all kids have the um, resources to go out and just buy books as they please. So we wanted to make sure we were donating books to kids to make sure we could keep them into reading. Also about the book donation, uh, we've donated books to local hospitals, daycares, and schools to make sure kids have an opportunity to uh, obtain books. We also partnered with nonprofit uh, organizations to use my talent to help others. And uh, we also partnered with a local organization to raise funds for different programs as well. So we've done all these things. These are just a couple of things we've done uh, with any community that we're really proud of. 
And of course, as we continue to grow, we hope that any community grows, we can do more and more for them. But it's very important to us. Now, we also have Authors Town Publishing. Now, I have three books, all of which we have self published. Um, and when I tell people about that, they say they have a lot of questions. Well, how do you do this? How do you do that? So, we wanted to design a business that not only would self publish my books, but also we could coach others through the self publishing process. But it can be very overwhelming. It can be very tedious. It's a lot to know, a lot to learn. Even us, we're on our third book and we're still learning. So even kids, like I went to a school uh, yesterday and I was telling the kids about how I had published, self-published this book and one of the questions, well, what if you don't know how to do that? How do you write a book? How do you do this? And I told her we have a program that can coach you through that process. Uh, we've done this with a couple of books already and I think this can really grow over time. So this is my latest book, The King of Pangea, which has been really successful. Kids are loving it. We're going to the schools, promoting it, and it's been really successful. Now, I'm going to talk about the name Authors Town because I'm pretty proud of it. Honestly, author, as in people who write books, but they have, I wanted to have that community feeling, like, you know, helping each other, giving somebody else a leg up, showing somebody else how to do something, how to, you know, make progress in what they're trying to do. Um, so I like the community tone that Authors Town gives. But also, it's a um, it's a nod to my 103 year old great grandfather who's still with us. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, he's 103 years old, and his name is Arthur Townsend. So you get it, Arthur. <laughs> so I really um, love this type of business. I think it's grow, and like I said, I also really enjoy entertaining and inspiring these books. Each book I've done has had a message for the kids to take from. Um, when they when they read it. Also, this gives me an opportunity to hit multiple ages um, with the business. Um, the plays and short films tend to lean a little bit more sophisticated and, and older. So the children's book gives me an, an opportunity to influence the kids and have something for them to enjoy as well. If the um, film and stuff lean a little bit more. Now let's talk about our bread and butter productions. This is the biggest thing that we have going on right now. So quick story. Um, when I was younger, about eight, I auditioned for this Christmas musical um, in Jonesboro, and I was psyched about it. I was really excited, but I did not get the part I wanted. So I was fresh. I was really upset. So I said, "Okay, mom, this is what we're going to do. write our own Christmas play. We put it on, and we're going to do it hard." So this is a picture from that. I would sit down at the computer, and I would tell mom the dialogue I wanted, the lines I wanted, and she would sit down and she would type it into the computer for me. And we had our own personal 20 page play that we put on here at my church. And you can see me there in the middle. That's me. And then we have uh, some of our family in the play, some of our church family, church friends. There's my little sister, which is about know, five, four or five in the play. I told you guys she was a big deal. <laughs> so, yes, this is our, as you can see, we put on in the church. A couple of years later, we did our second production, Grandma's Easter, which, which was another, another little play. And um, this was the first show that we toured from city to city. So we went from, did a performance in Little Rock at a church, and then we performed in Conway, I mean, not Conway, in West Memphis at a church. Um, but this was the first show that we toured. But that wasn't quite enough for little old age. So as you can see here, I wanted to expand these productions. I wanted to actually rent a theater and put on a full-fledged production. So I... Put together a little presentation and I put on my little jacket and shirt and pants here and brought it to my parents' bedside and I had a whole pitch meeting to my parents. I told them this is what I wanted to do and I asked them if you could figure it out. And then the great parents said, Oh, I can figure it out. So we did our first full fledged production in 2018 entitled Sister Secrets. We rented a set, rented a venue, a 1,000 seat venue that we filled up up there. Um, we also had a four-piece band, live band that performed and paid cast members, sound, lights, transportation, paid cast. It was the whole deal. We put on a real full-fledged production. Um, with to the theaters, we learned how to sell tickets, how to advertise. Um, the books pretty much kind of sold themselves at the beginning, but the, the tickets, we were kind of like, okay, how do we get these tickets out of our hands? So we had to develop our website to have a place that we could sell the tickets online. Um, I believe maybe what we can do ourselves, do it ourselves instead of going through a third party site, just to, you know, some more revenue that way. So we had to develop a way to sell tickets online. We had to print paper tickets to go out and distribute 
Um, I went to churches and spoke to con congregations promoting the play. We went into grocery stores and stopped people and put flyers in their cart. We put um, mm -hmm. at church, we would go and put flyers on people's cars so when they came out of church and they saw it. And we did a lot of things to, to promote and get the word out there that this, this was happening and it paid off. So we learned a lot with this production. And we put all the lessons that we can learn from this production into our latest and greatest and biggest production, which we did in June of 2022, called In Love With, in Love With Another Man. And this was big because we were able to implement all those things that we learned previously more efficiently with this play. Um, the first time it was very simple and minimal. This time we had a revolving set there that was spinning. We had pieces going in and out. Everything was bigger and better. Yeah, uh, and then we did the show in June of 2022 in Memphis, and then we did it here recently in February of 2023 at the uh, Colony High School Theater. Um, and we also recorded that performance so we can put it together and uh, distribute it later for people who weren't able to catch the live performance. So that that's the stage productions of uh, a national production, and we've also done some dinner and a show performance as well. So now let's talk about the film side. In 2020, I did a short film called Justice. It revolved around the police brutality, police, police brutality, thank you, that is happening, that was happening in our country. And it was uh, during COVID. So it gave me an opportunity to continue to work while everything was shut down. Um, so we did all the COVID testing, all the things. And this was my first short film. And you can go on YouTube and check it out. Um, I think it turned out really, really well. And then shortly after I did my first web series called Consent. And both of these projects go back to entertain and inspire. Not only do I want to have you on the edge of your seat with these storylines, but also put out a message. Obviously, this was about the horrors of police brutality. This one was about um, sexual consent, um, you know, and having sexual activities, make sure that the partner is consenting. So both of these are very um, um, informative to you. How we grow. We have done crowdsourcing. If you don't know what crowdsourcing is, it's basically you know a fundraiser, if you will, getting your supporters to pour into you, um, pour into your project. When I did my first book, we did a Kickstarter, and that really catapulted our my first book and also crowd publishing. I've also done several pitch competitions where um, you go in front, of, in front of a panel of judges and you have two minutes, one minute to talk about your project, which is very difficult. I'm doing right now. I'm going on and on for twenty minutes. <laughs> But um, I did several pitch competitions, even some through the conductor, and I was able to win thousands of dollars doing this, man. It really helps us oh, with a lot of the projects that we've been fortunate enough to do. Also through the conductor, I've done key belongings, which are really, really incredible. It is a process, it's an incredible process, and it has also helped get my third book off the ground. So I really encourage you, if you have something that you're struggling to find financing for, I would definitely look into the Keep Alone program, contact the conductor and see how you can get involved because it's really, really, it's really great. There's no interest, it's a loan, there's no interest on said loan. So we're able to pay the uh, the loan off without any interest, which is great. I'm also doing other business right now, which is big, which is being really big for us right now. Um, I'm going to school, speaking to, what do you say, 200, 300 kids at a time. Um, we have honorariums for these uh, speakings. Also, the, they send order forms home to the kids so they can buy books, which is really great. Um, so that's a, a really simple way that we're able to sell books to kids just by sending home those order forms that these schools will do. And as I talked about, also the productions. We're doing really well with our profit and revenue on these plays, and we hope to take that into our film as well, find a way to make revenue and profit off of those as well here in the future. Very quickly, I just want to talk about some of my awards and accolades. Um, I won the AR Conductor Minority Pitch Competition, like I spoke of, uh, two years in a row. And I was also able to be a judge that following year at the pitch competition. So that was really, really fun. Um, I also won the Arkansas Junior Achievement Pitch Competition. I also won the Arkansas Small Business Competition. <laughs> Young Entrepreneur of the Year. This is a really big deal for me. It kind of kept me going, kind of pushed me and said that I am being noticed. And uh, this is really, really big for us. So we're proud of that. I was also uh, notarized with the Arkansas of the day. So with that being said, if you would like to connect with the conductor, here's all of their socials and information. If you'd like to connect with me, my Instagram is ADS Under Production, my Facebook, 
Aiden that's on your production. The black on YouTube is Aiden that's on your production. So it's pretty simple to find me. And my website is just AidenSlinger.com. So please reach out. I believe we have a QA section here yeah. as well. So please reach out to me and see uh, what all I've done. Thank you guys for so <clears throat> so the question about being an author, so if someone already has some material or content, do they just contact you and ask you how do they get that content into the work form? Yes, ma'am. That is exactly what would be done. Um, even even if they have not written any, not written a word, we can I can kind of coach them through the beginning stage and say, hey, this is what you can do. Start by giving your first paragraph and an outline. So really just tips and tricks on how to get to where you're trying to go. But in, in this case, if you have something, we can show them how to format it, how to format their um, their book, how to get it into the printing software to be printed, how to get it um, read, and what's the word? Uh, edited. Edited. All those things, all those technical things that people might not think about or don't you know know how to get done, we take them through step by step and help them do it. Well, you're trying those emails you can contact the website. Um, we have a get in touch button at the bottom of the website that you can touch that you can click that will take you straight to our email. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, um, you're obviously younger. Yes. How do you juggle, um, you know, school and doing things that normal people your age would be doing with the business and everything? That's a very good question. It's, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's very much about balance and about priorities. Uh, you know, you have to kind of look at things in the, at, in the big picture. You know that I can't do this today because I want to do this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of have that mindset. Um, also, my mom has made it very clear that if the school work is not done, none of the extra stuff happens. I'm going to tell you exactly what she says. <laughs> School work has to be done first, and then that. And as far as when I'm having fun, I still do all the things um, just because I learned how to prioritize, how to compartmentalize, and it's time works, time works. But we can have fun on Saturday and do this. So it's all about finding balance in the yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so how did you and your parents prepare yourself to step into the room with other people who own businesses? Uh, this is my first gathering, and it was scary for me just to come here. So how do you prepare yourself for that? Luckily, I have two parents who work in the business world. My mom is the, uh, the director at UCA, and my dad is a, a salesman. So they have both learned themselves how to step into a room of professionals and how to um, engage in a meeting. So they've been able to teach me how to do those things. And thanks to God, I have a natural gift for speaking and just kind of being confident. So, and then over, over the time, I've just kind of learned how to be confident, how to know that you are important, your business is important, and just kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a learning process. I just kind of have to learn. The more you do it, the better you get. And like I said, they really have taught me how to step into the people better than I am doing this to be done for the business. Can I add something? Mm -hmm. He also, he, this is good for him before he even started his business. He talks to people, saying the same thing over and over again. He is sometimes like frustrated with that. He doesn't really love that part. Yeah. But but he has met some amazing people. And so what he's learned is that if you just, you know, a smile is universal. So, so he's really good at just working a crowd and talking to people, listening to their businesses, figuring out how um, they can work together. And through that, he's had so many opportunities. So when you get in a room like this full of different people doing different things, your business is going to automatically grow because you're going to meet somebody who can help you with one aspect and you can help them with somebody else. Or you may know somebody that can help them, they may know you. So he's figured that out. That just by talking to people, he's gotten a lot of opportunities. So it pays off to be friendly and to share your story and to help other people. Thank you. And I also, I, I try to instill it in two, um, just by what I do as a professor. Sometimes when you get in front of people, you only have that one opportunity to make it happen. So when you're going to them, you need to be professional, you need to have a plan, you need to have a strategy. And once you have a strategy and a plan, then you kind of win the room over. But don't never take that opportunity for granted because you never know if you get back in the room with those people again. And so whatever idea or practice you're trying to sell, then you need to try to make it happen. And so that's what you try to instill in for yourself. <laughs> oh, I have two questions. Um, how does like music play a role in like getting? Because I know you're doing productions, you're doing uh, your 
your books, but how have you used your abilities to sing um, to further your message? Well, mm -hmm. uh, with the plays, they are musicals. Yeah. So I'm able to implement music into them. And um, that's the next thing we're trying to do. I'm trying to get my music projects going and working because I do sing and I feel like that's kind of the next thing we want to try to look into. Um, but uh, we're still trying to figure out, figure that out, how we can continue to push the message through music. But um, the productions are largely musical. So I'm able to put a lot of my musical, um, Kind of scratch my musical yeah. itch through yeah. through the through the play. And then my second question is: If you were gonna, what do you? What is the next project you want to do? And what is needed plainly to move forward? Great question. So my, the next project I'm gonna do is a short film called Uncle Steve Box. And right now I'm looking for a videographer, a director of photography to kind of come in and we start planning and figure out how to make that uh, happen. Um, because you know the previous short films I've rented. Made a rent and people to come in and uh, do it. So I'm looking for some more people, um, a new partnership to come in and make that short film happen. So uh, it's moving slowly. Do we have anyone? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm questioning oh. about your work. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what is the timeline for the stage play? Uh, uh, the most recent stage play that I've done in February. Uh, what's the timeline from that point to uh, here? Right now we're editing the video, but I've been in school. I've been trying to finish school, so that kind of slowed down. <laughs> uh, but it's very close to being completed. And so those February, this is May. So I would say by July, we should have something completed and ready to uh, put out for the for the public. And oh, that's a good point. I'm editing it myself. Um, like I said, I believe in if you can do it yourself, do it yourself to kind of you know keep some of that revenue in house. Um, so I. I had my school, um, we have a class at school, we have cameras and things like that. So I had my school classmates come in and film the play. It looks incredible, it was great. And I'm gonna edit the play so we can put it out there soon. Um, so yeah, that's the timeline on that. Yes, sir. Do you have plans for traditional college or maybe supplementing your training with something that's very specific for the type of work you're doing, other courses or some specialized training? And potentially, did you, Maybe give us some insight into how that conversation is navigated between you and the parents. Yes, that's a very good question. The conversation has changed. Um, <laughs> when I was younger, I was you know very adamant on just going to college, you know, just going to traditional college and doing that. But now as I've gotten older and I've listened to people who are in my in the field I'm looking to go to, listen to the professionals, that's not necessarily the only way to get to where you're trying to go. So now we're looking into, you know, just specifically just a film school, or if I want to go to UCA and do the film program, or if I want to go to Georgia, and I'm just keeping all my options open. We're just now like diving deep into it and just starting to visit schools and looking into it. But the good thing about um, my parents and my mom specifically, she's worked in higher education for the majority of her adult life. So she's very um, educated on the topic. So she's really helping me through it. And we're just looking at all of our options and trying to figure out what's going to be best for me as far as my career and as far as financially, what's going to be the best? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, two points. Did you have to submit a pass through school to get out today to get excluded? Luckily, I have a great um, assistant principal who knows kind of about all my extracurricular activities. And uh, he's been very, uh, very gracious about that. And I typically am getting excused for uh, missing school. So that's been really, really good. But um, we do have to submit paperwork. I had to send the flyer that yeah. he was here today. When he does all the business, I have to send the information to him mm -hmm. where he is. And they count it as like learning opportunities outside. Yeah. Sure. And then, then too, on a more serious note, uh, I'm excited to see you grow know, when you first came in and just shooting out. It's just an astonishing process. Um, okay. Back to the crowdfunding and the power of networking. You just explicitly said, that's your next venture meeting uh, with a videographer and you're looking for partnerships. Can you talk more about those partnerships here with the audience way that they can get involved in possibly building to your organization? Very good question. We are in the very early stages of that production, so we haven't said anything and stopped for people to help yet. Um, but one way you can help really is just by going and following all of my social medias and you know being in tune with my website. That way, when there is specific information, you can help out if you like. Um, if you know anybody who does videography or anybody in that field, if you yourself 
are in that field, connecting with me, letting me know, giving me your card, all those things are really used. But as of now, um, I don't have anything specific you can do. But if you just want to go and follow these social medias, um, they're all the same. It's real easy to learn. Yeah. <laughs> if you just want to go and tap into these resources, then you are alerted that something is there. That's probably the biggest thing you can do um, as of now. Yes, ma'am. Do you have your books with you? I don't have, like I said, we went to the school yesterday, so we're pretty much Monday. out on books. I mean, Monday, so we're pretty much out on books, but they are on Amazon if you want to check some out. And they're, like I said, on my website as well. Um, so you can find them. Yes, ma'am. When you get started with your first play, do you have any training, you know, vocal or acting prior to that or, or subsequent to that? I have not. Um, I've done musicals throughout the business time, and I've kind of, kind of, taking what I've learned from the musicals that weren't mine and implemented them into my own business. But as far as your training, no, we haven't. We just kind of been flying and going as, you know, as we thought was best and it's worked out. Um, but now we have learned a lot. Um, I've learned from professionals. Uh, my theater teacher, Mr. Uh, AJ Spertolozzi at the Conway High School, he's helped me tremendously. He even helped build the set for my previous production. So, um, and like I said, that networking and meeting these professionals in, in all kinds of different um, fields, it really helped me learn how to run my own business. Another thing to that uh, is we used to, he loves Tyler Perry. And so we would go and see like the live, we lived in Georgia, and we used to go and see Tyler Perry live and see the plays and he studied it. And then we would get the DVDs and we would watch them over and over. He probably can say every line of every play. <laughs> So he watched how the set moved. When he came and told me he wanted to build a set that rotates, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Oh my gosh, <laughs> absolutely not. We don't have the budget. Was every reaction. Yeah, like, I was mm -hmm. like, no, and that is doing too much. But he had seen it, he had dreamed <laughs> it, and he was like, we know we can make it work. Wow. So that's kind of where his training, when he was eight years old, all he had was seen plays. Um, and, and we even started going to local plays that, you know, were around in the area of smaller plays we go and uh, I have a mentor in West Memphis who does uh, plays down there and he's been a big help. So like I said, just watching others, learning, trying something, watching it fail, and knowing what to do next time. Yes, sir. I just want to say a uh, mixed statement for parents to say uh, thank you just for um, supporting him uh, mm -hmm. in his vision because we'll be supporting him. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, in, in ballpark, I'm actually talking to uh, produce the justice for the movie. So, about seven thousand dollars. Yeah, because trying to do a bigger one, a bigger one, roughly around the same. <laughs> um, and the thing with the short films is that the revenue is just not as strong as the live production. So you have to watch how much you're spending and what you're spending it on. It is, I do consider it an investment because it's something that you can go online and watch and see uh, my work. Um, but it is something that you kind of have to watch the price. And we're looking to stay around that same um, budget for the next one. No. Um, <laughs> the short films don't make any money. I know they're special to him and he loves to do it, so we support it. But his web content, they brought like a more fan base, but just revenue generating, it does not. Um, so with the production, you know, we spend money, we sell tickets, we get sponsors and things like that. So we're trying to do the same scale of project, but everything has increased. Mm -hmm. So the cost to hire a videographer, to pay cash, to rent locations over the last three years, everything has almost doubled in that in mm -hmm. So even though the scale of the project feels the same for him as far as his writing and the amount of people in the cast, the actual cost of it is probably going to be closer to 10 than 7 was a few That's years. That's no problem. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> right. Just uh, I was wondering to know. Now, I know after high school, your college now, correct? Yes, ma'am. What are you going to major? Have you decided? Film. Maybe <laughs> business, too. Business. <laughs> I would even be open to a theater program. Like I said, I have been in the musicals, love theater. Um, so anything in that area, I'm open. Um, I'm open to all the things. We're just trying to figure out what that's for. This way, I this is not uh, really a question, but it's a, kind of like a statement. Since you're into a community and inspire people, have you guys ever thought about looking at grants? We have. Uh, did we get a grant? <clears throat> I think that we have gotten a grant, and I'm embarrassed. I can't remember. 
No, we did. We applied for a grant. We were working with someone who was writing grants for us. A lot of the issues comes in with him not being 18 yet, so everything has to go through us. Um, and then we wanted to get a grant for um, his short film, but it, there's so many rules, like it can't be public yet. So there's a lot of um, red tape. So we, we weren't successful when we went through, when we worked with um, Latanya, I don't know if y'all know her, but she's around here. She does grant writing. Um, and so that's just another a time issue that, you know, writing grants takes a lot of time. Um, and so we haven't had the time to invest. Okay, I just thought that there were grants, like when you're inspiring a community and you're helping them change the face of a community, then they have grants for that. And you're probably so right. So if you're looking at it, a group approach versus mm -hmm. being the film, but inspiring a community or changing the face of that community, there might be grants out there for that also. Okay. We had a question. Yeah, so I had a question on, um, for, for your coaching uh, mm -hmm. aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Have you, have you dabbled in the, like, uh, I guess financially supporting that, like, like what's the revenue model? For so right now is right now it's more of just a doing. We're just doing it out of the kindness of our heart, rather. Um, and all we ask is that they put our the logo at the first couple pages of the book. But as it grows and as we start to as we develop it more, we want to develop a system to where we can charge for the services. Um, we're like, you say, okay, so we're going to do this for this amount of months, give you these resources to do this, and then you can give us this, this amount, um, or even in the, in the long run, what we are, I want to get it to a place to where we are a real publishing company where we're doing these things and we get percentages of the revenue that the book brings in as it continues to develop. But as of now, it's very strictly just coaching, which is helping as of now. And um, when he did his first book, we connected with the conductor. We met with Jeff. And the first thing he told us is that books really don't make a lot of money. And so, you know, as an author, knowing that, I kind of kept that in mind. So these people who are wanting to self-publish, most of them don't have any money. Um, so we didn't think it would be wise to, like, really start charging people for coaching services. So it may take us, like, four or five hours to kind of, like, get them up and running. And, you know, a little bit of time here and there. So many people have had paid. So um, what you can do with the books, like the author visits, speaking that's engagements, what, that's where revenue comes in from mm -hmm. being an author. Um, but getting started in the process to self-publish is free. You can Google it and figure it out. And so we just didn't want to be keepers of that information. So we just do it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Maybe a behind the scenes, like subscription model or something. Yeah. Like Patreon. Yeah. <clears throat> any other questions? We have any more money? Well, wonderful. Thank, thank you, you guys so much. much. <laughs> All right. Before you guys go, I'd love to remind you about some upcoming events. So tomorrow we have um, a Conductor Connect mixer. So Conductor Connect is um, a service that we offer where we have uh, business leaders from different industries all across um, downtown and in the area, but they provide consulting services for free. Um, and tomorrow there's an opportunity to meet them from 4.30 to 6.30 here and just drop in and whenever you can. We will have drinks and appetizers. So we'd love to see you guys. You guys can meet them and connect with the rest of the team. And then, so that's tomorrow. And then on the 31st, we have Banking on Success with three um, local uh, bankers in town, and they're going to show you more about um, opportunities for entrepreneurs in the banking industry. So I hope to see you guys.